Hello, and welcome to the Community IT Innovators Technology Topics Podcast, where we discuss nonprofit technology, cybersecurity, tech project implementation, strategic planning, and nonprofit IT careers. Find us at communityit.com. Uh, welcome to Community IT Innovators Voices of Community IT series, and my name is Carolyn. I will be interviewing Phil Oswald Cristano today and uh, learning all about your role at Community IT and what brought you to this career and any advice that you would have for others who are coming after you. So uh, would you like to introduce yourself and tell me um, how many years you've been at Community IT? Sure. Uh, my name is Phil Oswald Cristano. Uh, I have been at Community IT almost 22 years. Uh, it's easy for me to remember because I started uh, uh, working at, uh, for, for this company in January of 2000. So whatever the year is, that's, <laughs> that's how long I've been. <laughs> it does make yeah. it easy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, what are your responsibilities? What, what do you do? So I, uh, well, I would say prime on, uh, I would say primarily I'm one of the senior engineers in the project's uh, team. Uh, and what that means, I, I help with, uh, you know, looking at the technical design of the project, as well as uh, looking at some potential gotchas, uh, as well as uh, uh, preparing and completing the project itself. And then of course, I, uh, at the end, I, I update the documentation so that everybody in the company uh, are aware of what's, what's going on uh, and ready to, to support uh, the client. Uh, and what I consider as my secondary uh, responsibility um, maybe less official <laughs> is uh, I, I do like mentoring uh, uh, junior staff, uh, help, uh, seeing, seeing them grow and helping them grow is, uh, is a joy. Um, and along with that, of course, uh, I uh, am an escalation point for uh, other staff members. Wow, that's so interesting. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Like, how did you become a mentor? And is it formal or informal? How do people know that they can seek you out for um, mentorship? So generally, I uh, kind of tap on people individually as I see them. Um, you know, with, with, with new staff, I, I let them adjust and be comfortable uh, and then, um, at some point, you know, just like everybody else, we, we, uh, make it known that we're, we're there to help if they have any questions, but at some point as I see them, uh, growing and I see the potential, uh, I would, uh, tap on them specifically and, and oftentimes I ask, Hey, have you ever thought about, you know, becoming engineer, um, uh, and then start conversation of what that looks like uh, as well as helping them see you know what what path uh, are available in, in the company and how to get there um, as well as uh, you know being being in the projects team uh, I have opportunity for people to shadow uh, so oftentimes I would say hey you know if if you would like to see how I set up you know, a server or do a cloud migration, or if you want to know anything about Azure, uh, here's a project I'm, I'm working on, feel free to join me. Um, and yeah, and that, that uh, provide the opportunity for people to learn. And as they mature even more, oftentimes I uh, uh, talk to their supervisor as well as my supervisor. Hey, can this person actually do the project with me? They will be driving. I will, I will you know, help uh, uh, plan the, uh, the, you know, the, the project and then they will do the work and I will be there with them uh, to make sure that everything's good. 
Wow, that's that's great to hear about. Um, I guess uh, professional development and mm -hmm. um, technical learning within community IT that there are paths to identify and help people grow in their skill set. That's really wonderful. Can you can you talk a little bit about uh, in your own job? Um, what do you do in a typical day? Like what is mm. what does your day entail? Well, um, typical day. I, I would actually say my typical day start with before bedtime, <laughs> which is when I check what's what's going on tomorrow. Because uh, I personally like, you know, to be prepared, uh, know, knowing what's what's ahead of me. So after I I see what's what's happening, then I sort of like set in my mind what what my day would be like. Uh, in the morning, typically, I, I respond to like high priority emails, uh, things that I need to reply right away. Um, and I'm, uh, I, I, I do use Microsoft Planner um, uh, to, to help manage uh, uh, my projects, since usually I have multiple, you know, spinning plates uh, with different priorities. So I have to, I have to know uh, as as I start my day, okay, what's what's the you know uh, what's the most important one I need to take care of? Uh, how much time to put and and all that and uh, yeah and then uh, and then after that I I just get to work. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the best part of your of your job? What's the part of your job that you enjoy the most? Well. Um, I would say it's the um, the realization that I am contributing, you know, to to the society and humanity. Uh, that, that there's a strong sense of purpose. Um, that it's not just you know migrating server or whatever the project is, but working with the nonprofit organizations. Um, you know, I get to really see what they're doing, not just, you know, on a website. Um, but for uh, just for example, the, the reason the, you know, recent uh, COP in Glasgow, uh, knowing that there are clients that were presenting there and involved in that, or um, seeing clients that work, you know, around election uh, to make sure that um, people are voting, uh, or clients that serve refugees, you know, uh, the homeless population, uh, education sector, or working in uh, food insecurity. Um, you know, it, it feels good to 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 be a part of that, even if you're in the background. Uh, the other thing I like about my job is there's a there's a respect for personal life. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of flexibility uh, and boundary. Uh, I'm not working 24-7, um, you know, and, and the boundary that I set is respected. Uh, of course, you know, I'm, I'm here for any emergency. Give me a call and I will respond. I think that it makes it easier to respond in an emergency when everything is in an emergency. Yeah. When right. you have good systems in place so that the team can handle what they can handle and they escalate what really needs to be escalated and mm -hmm. you can respond to the client in a way that's helpful that doesn't take all of your energy all of the time. Yeah. And that's, I've heard that from other community IT um, employees as well, mm -hmm. that that life work balance helps you be a better employee. And mm -hmm. also, of course, helps you have a better life, you know, because you're right. not available 24 hours a day. Yeah. 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 And, you know, by having a better and less stressful life, the more you can give as well. Right. That's right. Uh, and, and the, the other thing that I really enjoy is just the, the teamwork. Uh, people are really willing to help each other um, and oftentimes go the extra mile to help. And 
to me that's important, not just with clients, but also internally within the company. Is there something about your job that, um, that we probably don't know about what a senior engineer does um, that you'd like to, you'd like to tell us? Well, for me, uh, within the context of you know, senior engineer in, in, in the project's team, uh, one thing that I really like is that my work is all project-based. And what that means is there's a clear beginning, there's a clear end. Um, and I have the chance to work with different clients because, you know, it's not just one client for a long time, but I get to uh, move and get to know different clients um, and get, you know, glimpses of what they actually do. Um, and then uh, because, again, because what I do are all projects, I end up working with all the uh, what I would consider the cutting edge technology. Um, and, uh, and it's interesting as, as I talk to uh, friends in, in, in the IT world outside the nonprofit uh, circle, uh, sometimes I even discover that our clients are more on the cutting edge than, and, you know, than, than the rest of the world. Uh, part of, partly it's because we're, you know, tend to be smaller um, and easier to manage. Uh, so that's, that's really great. Um, and being uh, in a position of mentor also means I get to see people grow. And like, like I mentioned earlier, that, that is just uh, a joy for me. That's great. That's great. Um, so I want to take you back 22 years <laughs> and ask you a little bit about why, if you remember why you applied to community IT, how did you come to community IT? And if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about your, your background and your story, because I know that's very interesting as well. When I was uh, uh, looking at community IT, um, back then I was, I was really attracted by what, the company uh, does, and and also who the company was at the time, uh, and and still is. Uh, personally, I'm the kind of person that I just don't work solely for for the money. The income is important, but the non monetary benefits are very important to me as well. Um, so things that I looked at, uh, you know, um, company culture, uh, who the clients, uh, relationship, again, internally, as well as with the clients, uh, sense of purpose and, you know, th things like that. And, um, and it's really uh, interesting to hear what the, the founder of the company, uh, he hearing how he talked about the company. Uh, at one point, and and this has been, this story has been passed around, you know, over and over. At one point, he he, I, I believe, said to Johan, uh, "You know, you're not working for an IT company. Uh, you're working for a people company," and that really makes me feel like I, I found my home um, because you know. Sure, you can you can work for company that pay you twice as much, but if if you do not have that sense of purpose uh, and don't really enjoy and love what you're doing, um, what's the point? Uh, it's 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 not sustainable. I think um, I've heard that from other employees <laughs> as well that it feels like coming home or coming you're joining a family that you probably should have always been part of um, but I know that um, for a lot of people who are pursuing a technology career maybe nonprofit technology would not be the first thing that they would think of um, so can you talk a little bit about was there anything um, like um, in high school or when you were you know, considering the skills and the talents that you would need um, to have, like you said, a, a job that was 
about more than just having a job. Um, was there anything, any advice you would give um, your former self or someone in high school or college now who's thinking about a technology career that could be fulfilling? Yeah, the, the biggest thing for me is really knowing yourself. Uh, because when, when you know yourself, then you know what you want. Uh, and then you know what to look for. Uh, and that is, that is a journey that um, may not come easy for everyone, um, but it's an important, important one to, to, to have. Um, so, you know, as, as far as uh, my background, uh, you know, I, I graduated from a small liberal arts college, uh, uh, Goshen College. And while while in there, I I, I learn and uh, they, they they put a lot of emphasis in, in things like uh, service and social justice and people, and that sort of like shape uh, who I am and helps me understand what I want and what I'm looking for in life. Uh, so sure, IT is you know something that. Uh, what I'm doing, but there is a there is a bigger thing. I, IT is just the tool, right? So for a lot of a lot of our clients, IT is what get them to do what they need to do. Uh, and in the same way, um, this job uh, is also a small uh, component in my life that gets me to do what I want to do. Um, so that's. That's probably a, you know like a, a, an unusual one uh, as far as answer to, to, to your <laughs> question because uh, <laughs> to, to to study life uh, in order to, to <laughs> or know yourself one, exactly <laughs> that honestly that's that's really what it is for me. I think that it actually makes sense. Uh, my next question is about um, technology and um, tech techs, you know, at admin support, um, uh, there are a lot of stereotypes, some of them fair, some of them unfair about it. And I guess what I'm hearing you say um, about your background and advice that you would give is that um, maybe if you're the type of technology person where you're thinking like, I'm going to get this certificate, I'm going to get this skill, and then I'm going to do this thing. And you're you know, like, and that's a maybe fair, unfair stereotype of people who are interested in technology of being very, um, you know, sequential, one thing, one thing, one thing, what you do the next thing. Um, and maybe if you're in technology, you're interested in technology, um, but that isn't an extreme fit for you of being sequential like that. I'm hearing you also say with the mentoring and the technology professional development at Community IT, you can, if you have the right, you know, personality mindset, you know who you are mm -hmm. and you want to have this role helping the nonprofits, you can develop the skills uh, as well, the technology skills. So you don't necessarily have yeah. to have taken every technology class in high school to be able to make a career of it. Is that, yeah. does that fair? Yeah. And, and that's an interesting one that you, you, you bring that up because uh, if you look through the history of this company, especially in the beginning, most of the people working in the company did not come from IT background. I was one of the one of the few that actually had prior IT experience. Uh, I was working at the manufacturing company, uh, basically running the the IT there. Uh, but a lot of uh, the people working at community IT started as engineer or social worker. Uh, but the key here is, you know, even though we are a people company, we are, IT is what we do. So having the aptitude, having the ability to learn uh, and having the, the ability to troubleshoot, for example, you know, uh, the ana analytical thinking, that's all important. So um, if you have that, uh, 
but do not have the experience or the certifications, I think you can do it. Yeah. Um, but some people uh, also think, okay, so if I get all the certifications, um, I will I will be successful. Not not always. That's not always the case. I think I think certifications are important, but uh, there's there's a lot more beyond that to 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 be successful. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. I think um, I'm going to ask the next question about mentoring because mm -hmm. I can hear that mentoring is really important to you and that's a, um, a skill that you enjoy. But um, if you knew of someone at another company <laughs> who was maybe not feeling as fulfilled or supported in a technology role, um, do you have advice for them if they can't come up and ask you, Phil, to be their mentor? Um, where else do you go for support and for um, you know professional ad advancement and development? Um, <laughs> so that's uh, I think that will depend a lot on uh, where they are and you know their their community. Uh, but again, like first, first and foremost, I would I would invite that person to sort of analyze first what what is it really that make you unhappy, right? Is it is it because uh, of the company policy, company culture? Uh, so it's not necessarily the IT, right, or or the IT job, but uh, the bigger thing around around the job, um, and. Do you know what you want? <laughs> um, th those are all very, very important. And I think first thing you need to understand, what is it that you're uh, dealing with? Um, but I think once, once you know what you need, um, there are different uh, things you can, you can plug into. Uh, for example, uh, especially pre-pandemic, there are you know plenty of like uh, uh, user groups online, or even in in cities there are uh, you know some meetup group for networking. Um, if you're in the you know nonprofit scene. Uh, going to conferences like uh, Anton Conference is is a great way to network and connect with people. Uh, that will, you know, that will help a lot. Um, and and yeah, like uh, net, net, networking, I think is is very important. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But so you said that you um, you are one of the people who came to community IT um, from another technology job, another IT job. And I'm wondering um, for other people who might be making that jump, did you have any doubts about joining a company like community IT where, as you said, um, you'd be serving nonprofits and you have this work-life balance? Um, did you have any doubts about uh, doing that the wisdom of doing that for your career and how would you answer that if other people have doubts about that uh, thinking about applying yeah um so for me again because of uh my background and and who i am there is no doubt uh, i mean to, to some degree starting starting a new job there's always a new doubt uh starting a new life in different city uh, you know, I, I moved from a small town in Indiana to, to DC. Uh, there's always a doubt. Um, and working for a company that serves nonprofits uh, also means financially there's some doubt, right? Um, so there, there's always that. But I think... Um, in terms of uh, uh, you know how long I would last in a the company, <laughs> there there's no way of knowing whatsoever, you know. And and I'm the kind of person that would uh, that tend to take it like a day at a time. Uh, so as far as I can sense that this is home, 
and all my basic needs are satisfied, um, I will just continue on, you know? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> no more doubts. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> um, I guess that's um, a good uh, segue to my uh, last question, which is, um, so you uh, know very well and have been with community IT for quite a long time. When, when you meet someone new and they ask you, what does community IT do? What, what do you tell them? Um, so, I, you know, like I, I, I used to plan this and, and try to come up with a catchy answer. Um, but these days, honestly, I, I um, answer just the, the most practical or give the, the most practical answer um, that, you know, uh, we, we serve nonprofit uh, organizations uh, where we're, you know, we we do IT and we serve nonprofit organizations, and part of the reason is because uh, as as you talk to people, sometimes you realize that they're not really interested to dig deep. <laughs> so I I give that a uh, short answer as as a way to sort of sense. Okay, are you are you wanting to? talk more or are you just wanting a short answer um, but if if you know people I talk to are interested in having a deeper conversation uh, then I, I definitely will and and talk about uh, you know how how we are different um, sure we're an MSP but we're not just any MSP uh, we work with uh, you know, we're, we're in IT, but it's not just IT. Um, and, and, and hopefully they will understand better what that means. <laughs> <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds good. Um, I am just so, thank you so, so much for doing this interview with me today. I, I really appreciate um, your answers and just being able to talk about um, being at Community IT for 22 years. Sure, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Community IT does these free webinars and podcasts for our community, and we love sharing our knowledge and experience. If you have more questions or are having trouble with your IT at your nonprofit, please get in touch with us on our website, www.communityit.com, so we can start a conversation or schedule an assessment. Downloading any of our free resources there will get you signed up for our webinar reminders, and you can attend our next webinar in real time and ask our experts your own questions. If you love podcasts, please subscribe and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits.